Hello world! One of Ableton's best loved secrets is the soft clip function in the glue compressor. But the way it works is often misunderstood, with producers enabling it simply because they've heard it's a good idea. So let me talk you through it and show you a simple rack you can make to really get the most out of it. Let's get started. To demonstrate, I'm going to layer together three snare samples. The first provides the body of the sound. The second will add a real snare timbre. And the third adds some high-end crisp. And together? Now, let's resample and see where that gets us. We can see from the resampled audio that there's a lot of unevenness in the peaks of the waveform. This is a common artifact of layering, which is why we often compress or even limit groups of layers together, evening out these peaks to create a sample that is more uniform in volume. So let's use the glue compressor's soft clip function to achieve this. You might have already seen my video on clipping in Ableton, where I explain digital hard clipping. Soft clipping is very similar, only it tries to retain the original shape of the waveform. So let's go ahead and hit that magic button. Hear the difference? No? Me neither. And that's because it's not doing anything yet. The soft clipping only starts happening if the signal is pushed close to the 0 dB limit. At that point, you'll see this light beginning to flash, letting you know that soft clipping is happening. So let's use the handy makeup parameter to increase the signal level and drive it into the soft clipping region. OK, now we're getting somewhere. One thing to notice is that, even though we are quote unquote clipping, the peak signal continues to rise as I push it further into the soft clipper. This is a side effect of having oversampling engaged. If I turn it off, we can now see that the signal never goes above negative 0.5 dB. So there's a trade-off here, either a higher quality soft clipping through oversampling, or a hard fixed limit. In this scenario, I don't need to strictly limit the sample, so I'll stick to oversampling. Now, when compressing or limiting, which is really what we're doing here, it's good practice to compare the compressed and uncompressed signal, and to do so at the same peak volume level. So load up a utility, group it with the compressor, Command G, Jumanji. and map both the compressor makeup gain and the utility gain to macro 1 setting the utility gain limits to the opposite of the makeup gain limits, 0 to negative 20 dB. So now, as I push the signal closer to the clipping region, the peak volume stays constant. So far so good. As I continue to push the signal, the peak volume actually begins to reduce, since the clipper is now limiting the signal, while the utility continues to reduce it. For this reason, I like to add an extra utility to the start of the rack, mapping it to a second macro, and fixing the lower limit to 0 dB. So from here, the workflow is simple. Starting with the first macro, Push the signal into the clipping region until the light begins to show. And then with the second macro, push the signal as far into the clipper as you like. In this way, we can listen to the changes we make while maintaining the same peak volume. Finally, we can visually inspect how we've evened out the peaks by resampling.
As a finishing touch, I'll tidy up the rack, and there you have it. Now you can achieve that sought after Ableton Glue soft clipping sound in seconds with this rack at your fingertips. Click.